Hi, I'm Rabin and today I want to talk to you about sun magic. Even if you are not a morning person, seeing the sunlight around us makes us happier people. It lightens our moods, warms our hearts, it gives us motivation to become more productive. The sun's ultraviolet B rays heat cholesterol in the skin cells, providing the energy for vitamin D synthesis to occur. The very substance that helps our body to absorb calcium so that we can have a healthier and stronger body. The sun is also responsible for our own existence. Without its presence, plant life would be nearly non-existent, that would cause a total lack of oxygen to our planet. Our planet would become a a inhabitable, cold and dark place. In ancient time, the cycle of the sun was used for time measurement. Sun play a very big role in agriculture. Ancient farmers expected their seeds to sprout and push through the earth and they knew the ground had to be warm for it to happen. Solar symbol circle with central dot. This sun symbol is very ancient, no one seems to know its origin. It is used by astrologers to depict the sun's position in natal charts. It is also been used as the alchemist symbol for gold, botanical symbol for plants with a lifespan of one sun cycle, which is one year. Quarter circle. This symbol was found dating back to about 3000 BC in the rock carvings and writings of the Egyptians, Cretans, Etruscans, Greeks, Romans, Chinese, and pre-Columbian Americans. It is also known as the Sun Cross. It's also known as Odin's Cross, the astronomical symbol for Earth, the astrological symbol for the part of fortune, and the solar halo in British meteorological systems. Sextant Circle. Dating back to the early Bronze Age, this circle image was found in many places during the archaeology archaeological excavation of Mohenjo-Daro, which is now a part of modern-day Pakistan. Swastika. We know that Hitler chose this figure to symbolize the Nazi party during the World War II, but it originally symbolized the sunfire, continuous motion and the infinite process of creation. It's been associated with Artemis, Athena, Astarte, Wooden, Freya and Valkyria, also known as as Bridget's cross, it's linked to the Celtic goddess Bride in her Christianized version, sacred to the Hindu god Ganesha, the remover of all obstacles. When it's drawn with arms pointing to the left, it symbolizes life or the sun moving in a clockwise motion. Drawn with arms pointing to the right, it represents death or the moon when moving in a counterclockwise motion. Shamash Roset, found in the Tigris Euphrates area around 1000 BC, it was used to represent the sun, highest divinity, rulership, and the Babylonian sun god Shamash. Asur Rosette. Dating back to 850 BC, this symbol was found in Assyrian stone sculptures. It's said to have represented Asur, the creator god. Phoenix. It was often used by Egyptians to represent the sun, whom they believe died each evening and was reborn again every morning. This figure was also adopted by the early Christians as a symbol of resurrection and life everlasting. Solar Eclipse Symbols Maltese Cross Dating back to 2000 BC, it was found on crowns and royal jewelry throughout the ancient world. Astronomers say that this cross represents the four flares that extended from the sun's corona during a solar eclipse. Cross of Marma This cross was found in Hawaii, it's a good representation of the marriage of the sun and moon during the intermediate phase of total eclipse. Winged disc. Popular in ancient Egypt, this symbol fully resembles the bird pattern formed by the sun's corona when sun's productivity is at a minimum during the first stages of a solar eclipse. It's also very likely that it was the impetus for wings of Isis and the whole like head of the sun god Ra. This is a feminine symbol of everlasting life. Astronomers also believe that this symbol originally derived from the bird-like pattern formed in the initial stages of the solar eclipse. 
solar symbol structures. Obelisk was used to mark time, but in ancient Egypt it was thought to house the sun god and was sacred to Ra. The Canaanites and Phoenicians, however, built the structures to honor Baal, a god of fertility and possibly a sun god as well. Whether the latter is true or not is a subject of much debate. The obelisk is definitely a structural sun symbol and the translation of the world is said to be Baal's shop or Baal's organ of reproduction. Eight spoked wheel. It's similar to solar rosette but it's also akin to the ancient Celtic sun wheel in which the central cross marked the solstices and equinoxes and the bisecting X marked the fire festivals that made up their solar year. Solar gender. Today we think of sun as masculine, but there are many ancient solar goddesses as well. Sun goddesses were associated with the sky, fire and beauty. Many were also associated with mirrors and often took the form of shields. Here are some goddesses that were associated with the sun. Japanese sun goddess Amaterasu, Suna, the Scandinavian sun goddess, Celtic sun goddess Brigid, in Native America a very important sun goddess to the Karaoke people was Analunuhi. Sol, Freya, Shakti, Surya, Walu, Sekhmet, Sul, and Aine. Also Medusa, a Greek snake dressed goddess that is associated with the mirror. She also gave birth to a sky creature, Pegasus. I cannot go into too much detail of why these deities are associated with sun or this video will be way too long. But if there were just as many sun goddesses as sun gods, why don't we think of the sun as being being androgynous instead of masculine. No one really knows but while women got some of the sun's qualities like warmth and nutrients, they also got many characteristics basic to the moon. Women are also mysterious creatures and there is the fact that they cycle with the moon. Men are physically strong, they define, protect, they tend to look at things in a simpler, less complex way. Sun is dependable, he got gathers wind, oxygen, light, warmth to defend and protect us. Unlike the moon, he doesn't take his time about moving across the sky, he comes and goes and is efficient in his efforts. The sun is also the counterpart of the moon and is her exact opposite. And since the moon is viewed as feminine, it only makes sense for the sun to be seen as masculine. To learn more about sun magic, you can read Everyday Sun Magic by Dorothy Morrison. I really enjoyed this book, but you have to keep in mind that the author is Wiccan. It shouldn't be a problem for most of you who don't practice this religion like myself, as you can just read past it. Other than that, this book have more in-depth information on the subjects that I mentioned in this video so I would suggest to read this book if you are interested in learning more. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more witchcraft content it really would help my channel grow and my videos could be recommended to more people that would love to learn more about this practice. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.